What is up, guys? Welcome to the channel. Uh, I got my friend Sean on here today, and uh, we are going to be reviewing Nick Jonas's new album, Spaceman. Uh, so it's been almost five years since Nick Jonas has had a solo album, though uh, the Jonas Brothers did get back together here uh, a few years ago and had an album. 2019. Uh, 2019, uh, Happiness Begins. And so he's, it's not that he hasn't made any music, but it's good to hear uh, some new uh, Nick solo music. That's a little bit of an introduction to it. Uh, he was pretty quiet during the making of the album, but uh, lyrically, uh, a lot of it has to do with um, him meeting his wife and then all the stuff going on in like COVID uh, and just some of the emotional turmoil that comes along with that. So uh, be before we go into a track by track uh, analysis, Sean, anything else you want to add? I remember seeing stuff on Instagram of like the spaceman stuff and i thought it was a show originally because the, it was kind of a strange title and just a strange thing for an album so i didn't right. expect it so i figured it was it was a show and then when he actually released the single spaceman i like flipped out i was like oh shit he's making he's making a solo album again and i like freaked out and got super excited and this was only like two weeks before the album came out and so i listened to spaceman and i loved it i mean i, I wasn't expecting it to be bad but yeah i loved it and I just, it just got me really excited. Well, yeah, I guess uh, leading up to that. So Spaceman came out uh, just a, a couple of weeks before the the album it's named after. Not much preparation for it. But uh, what were your initial uh, feelings from that song? Because uh, I know for me, like his last solo album was uh, one of my favorite albums of 2016. And uh, the most recent Jonas Brothers album was one of my favorite albums from that year. Uh, so what were your thoughts after hearing Spaceman? Honestly, yeah, like after hearing it, I was like, oh, man, that's really very cool, very catchy, very cool concept. It also just kind of got me thinking about how space has kind of been big with a lot of artists like with Kid Cudi and Travis Scott, like because they released like especially in the 2010s with like Men on the Moon and Astro World. It's just been space has been kind of a big thing in music. Which, yeah, I know. You, I know you don't like them, but Star Set. I'm going to pretend I don't know who that is. So. Yeah. <laughs> My big concern with uh, the song Spaceman was, uh, well, first of all, I really liked it. I thought it was nice and moody. I liked the flow. Uh, the chord progression is really simple, but it's it's cool. Uh, I like all the major seventh chords and stuff. Like um, pop songs. Chord yeah. progression is really simple. Okay. Yeah. Really simple, but really cool. Um, but I am not a fan of people writing songs about COVID because eventually the stuff is going to go away and things will eventually go back to normal and then it's like are we going to be able to go back and listen to this music again but after i let the song sit with me for about a week i think the song stands on its own even outside of the context of covid because i mean there's even like the lyric where he's like uh mask off man i get home which is obviously a reference to to covid but if we're really going into the uh whole analogy of actual space man i mean they'd be wearing masks and i don't think it's too covid oriented i think even when this stuff ends it'll still be a good song with a meaning that that we'll get across to people yeah i mean i'm just kind of not even just music related i'm just kind of sick of hearing about covid in general but yeah, <laughs> yeah. i do agree that i'm glad he kind of like did this clever wordplay mm -hmm. on the song because you know like a spaceman being trapped on like a distant planet or something like that can you can kind of relate to the whole covid situation with the uh, lockdown and everything you know not being able to see our loved ones or you know just kind of being on our own just kind of trapped and so i'm glad that he did that he kind of gave it a persona you know, spaceman so i uh, otherwise yeah i do agree the replay value for this album would probably not be very good if he was just like talking about covid directly it mm -hmm. wouldn't be as subtle yeah and i think it's i think it's subtle enough i think uh it's not like on the nose i think right now we get it because we're in it but i think you know uh once it's been five ten years from now people can still listen to it and uh so think it's good even outside the context so the other song that uh came out before the album dropped was uh this this is Heaven, which uh, was premiered on Saturday Night Live, I think, right? Well, yeah, the live version premiered and then he released it on Spotify, I think maybe like a week before yeah. the album dropped, I think. So what did you uh, what did you think of that song? Well, when I first heard it on Saturday Night Live, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. It's kind of very gospel, has a gospel feel to it, especially with a lot of the backup singers. Mm -hmm. And I, I got really excited. I love the sax solo. I thought that was a cool and unique touch. And then when I heard the, the actual like version, the real version of the song, I was like, oh, okay, this is really cool. And I also really like kind of the meme that they made about it recently. This is Kevin. So I thought that was funny. So. <laughs> oh, the pop up on the screen here. Yeah, that I love that. That is so awesome. Yeah, my thing with it was I actually wasn't stoked on it originally when I heard it on Saturday Night Live. But then when I heard it again on Spotify, I was like, oh, yeah actually this is really cool because i mean the production value was so like minimal uh when they played it live because they had like the keyboardist the drummer nick singing a couple background singers and that was it and i was like i mean it's kind of good but, but that sucks though that's well that's yeah sax. but even on the saturday night live performance it was kind of pitchy like there were like a couple like i don't know if i could call them wrong notes but they were like blues notes in a song that didn't require blues notes so it's just kind of weird 
Well, but then like I heard the like, yeah, I heard the actual like, recording. That's the thing. Yeah, but then I heard the actual recording. I was like, oh, yeah, this song's pretty Saturday good. Night Live to like a real, because I mean, it's not really a music-based show. It's more of like a right. live sketch show that mixes music that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So so did you uh, watch all of the skits that Nick was in? No, I don't think I did. I, I, I don't think I watched all of them. None of them were very good. You don't need to watch them. <laughs> I mean, the mon- I watched the monologue with Kevin. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Are, are we good? Because uh, I see you're doing a lot of solo stuff. <laughs> are, are we still a band? Of course. Are, are you sure? Because I, I just bought a house. We talked a little bit about Spaceman and This Is Heaven. So when we do the track by track review here, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of skim over them very quickly. We won't go as in depth as yeah. uh, some of these other songs. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, start yeah. it off. Track one is uh, Don't Give Up On Us. My initial thoughts on it is uh, it's a really good way to set the mood. It is one of the more upbeat songs on the album, but the whole album itself is almost lo-fi, like uh, not a lot of really hard hitting stuff, really simple arrangements, really simple instrumentation, lots of reverb. Um, but it was one of the more upbeat songs, and uh, I thought it was a really good way to open the album. Yeah. Um, when I first heard it, I actually wasn't a huge fan of it. I actually thought it was one of the weaker tracks on there. But kind of the thing with this is that it kind of did set the mood. The more, like the second or third time I listened to it over, I, was, I actually started to appreciate it a lot more that now that I kind of knew the sound of the album and how the transitions are. But yeah. It's not, it's, I'd say it's still probably kind of one of the more underwhelming songs on the album, but I wouldn't say it's bad. Not as exciting as compared to a lot of the other songs. So it's probably one of my lesser favorite songs on the album. It's one of my lesser favorite songs too. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just a, it's a good enough song that it makes sense that it's on the album. Um, and I don't know where else it would belong other than at the front. With that said, it just it, it is a really good way to set the mood. But yeah, not not one of my favorites or anything like that. Also, I, I lyrically, just kind of shallow. I, yeah, well, I, I do agree with that. I, I think it's definitely good. I think this album kind of starts off weaker songs at first, and then it picks up and gets more consistent, gets better and better, which I'd rather have that than you know, have all the best stuff in the beginning, and then it just tarnishes at the end. I don't think any songs on here are bad actually if we're being honest there's not a single song i was like oh that was ass what did i just listen to? <laughs> right so track two is heights uh and it's a, again not one of my favorite songs it is one of the weaker songs on the album and i think i like the chill version of it better which is on like the deluxe edition but i think the production on it's really cool i think that chorus is really neat uh and and honestly especially in pop music that's what's going to make or break a song is whether or not the chorus is good so uh, yeah, yes. do you have any thoughts on that, that one? Is, that is 100% facts. I think my favorite thing actually about this song is the transition at the end with, you know, the kind of, I like, I love the sounds in this album. Like, I love how they made it sound very Spaceman-like. It, it just, it almost sounds nostalgic in a way. It sounds like an 80s sci-fi movie, and I love that. So, but yeah, yeah, I do really like the chorus on this song. I love the rhythm, and I like, it's it's a lot very unique compared to a lot of the other songs. I actually do enjoy the song quite a bit, and the more I've listened to it, the more I like of it, so. And that happened several times on this album where it uh, has that cool transition. And a lot of cool stuff that made that happen is on a lot of pop albums, it's like, uh, a song here and there that are written at completely different times by different people in different studios with different producers. And I'm pretty sure with this album, I didn't fact check myself, so don't take this as gospel, but I'm pretty sure they worked with like the same three or four people to make this album all roughly at the same time. Um, so not only did that allow us for, to get a consistent sound, uh, you know, with the analog synths and the lots of reverb that sound great um, and a lot of consistency in the the vocal takes and um, the, the mixes and all that, which is just nice on a consistent basis because uh, you don't get that a lot in pop records. Something else that makes it different is with those transitions, uh, it almost turns it into a concept album almost as far as just it's an album that makes sense to listen to from beginning to end. And that's like a fun way to listen to it, which you don't get that a lot with pop music either. No, I definitely agree. I love the consistency in this album is very on point. That's definitely one of the best things about this album is just how well how unique it sounds and how it all kind of flows together like it, it sticks okay so yeah we'll kind of skip track three since we already talked oh, about it. All right. <laughs> so uh track four is uh too drunk which is probably my favorite song on the album uh production top notch chorus awesome sounding man and this is like uh, another one of those songs where it's like the chord progression is so freaking simple but so cool because it goes like I think it goes from like the F sharp to the uh, add seven. And then like just that little bit of dissonance in there adds so much 
contrast and growth to the song. Um, the lyrics are cool and something that's relatable too, because especially during lockdown, you know, it, not that it's a healthy coping me mechanism, but it is one that like people are, you know, drinking by themselves because they can't go out with their friends and they, you got to cope and you got to deal with it somehow. I mean, Hey, look at, look at me, you know, like, <laughs> but probably my favorite song on the album, actually. When I heard the chorus for the song, when he gave like a snippet on Instagram, cause there was like a filter for this song for a little bit, like a couple days before the album came out and I heard it, I was like, Oh man. Like I, I got very excited. T just the title kind of caught my attention. And yeah, and it is a great song. And it is probably going to be the fan favorite from what I've been hearing. And it is also very relatable. You know, it's a fun song. It's a fun song that you can vibe to, but it's also very relatable because I think a lot of us turned into alcoholics when lockdown happened. Yeah, it's just a really, really fun song. And it's definitely a song that I'll probably be jamming to a lot in this, this summer. Yeah, it's going, it's going on the summer playlist for sure. My, yeah, if if not, it's it's either my favorite or it's tied for my favorite, but it's really, it's definitely one of the highlights of the album yeah so uh sean and i are actually going to be doing a cover of this song that will probably hopefully come out sometime next week middle of the week end of the week something like that uh so if you're new make sure to subscribe so you see that when it comes out and hopefully it won't end up like the 22 <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just uh, so track five is delicious um this is actually one of the songs that i'm just kind of like eh about uh like i like the horn section in it but that's like about it it just didn't do much for me but I don't know if you had a different take yeah. on it or something else to give on it. Yeah, when I first heard it, I was just kind of like, okay, you know, not bad, not great. And then I heard it again, listened to it a little more. I was like, okay, it's actually a bit more fun than I remember. The thing with me is whether it's a song, an album, I have to listen to it at least a couple of times until I can actually have an opinion on it. I can't just say anything from the first hearing. The more I listen to it, the, again, the more I appreciated it. It's a really simple song and it's, it, I do like the horn section. And it is kind of catchy, and I also just kind of like the vibe to it. But yeah, it's, I mean, I if, it, say it's my if it came on at a party or a club or favorite. something, I would dance to it, you know? But I think of all the other songs on this album, it'll be one that like I don't go out of my way to listen to, you know? Yeah, it's, I mean, but also with two drum being the song, and then it translated into that, you're kind of just on such a high from that song, and then you hear this song, like, okay, this isn't as good, but you know. That's true. It. That definitely could be part of it. If it was placed behind another song, I feel might appreciate it more. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't, I would say it's definitely not the, my least favorite song, but it's not my favorite song. It's just kind of like a song that, you know, when it comes on, I'll enjoy it, but you know, I'm not going to, I'm not like crazy about it or anything. Yeah. And on your note where you were saying you have to listen to something a few times before you really have an opinion. That's why my album reviews come out like a week after the album comes out instead of like that day or the day after it's cause like people shouldn't be trusting their gut and things like that. You know, like you should listen to it a couple of times and yeah. translate for what it really is. I don't think anybody should judge something from the first viewing. That doesn't make any sense at all. Like I don't, I don't know how somebody can comprehend all of the possibilities and all of the art from, and just all the, just the meaning from one album from one hearing it's like I, I don't know that doesn't make any sense to me it doesn't make any sense to me i mean i probably get way less views on my album reviews because i come out a week later instead of like that same week but i don't care i feel like my reviews are more honest <laughs> yeah um, i mean that's all that matters at the end of the day yeah exactly uh so track six is this is heaven which we already talked on so we'll kind of move on from that uh track seven is sexual uh do you want to start off with this one yeah you <laughs> I just, I love the progression of the song. I love the lyrics. I love just how much of a vibe it is. And I feel like there's a little bit of R&B in influence in there. And I love the lyrics. I love the Marvin Gaye uh, shout out. I thought that was really cool. And I also really love the piano. I love when, whether it's, I, I love, I mean, I just love the sound of piano. I think we all love the sound of piano. So I love the little, just the little tidbits, just little touches like that. And well, yeah, I mean, that's because yeah, piano is in literally every genre, you know? So it's just exactly, so I think everybody yeah. loves the sound of a piano. So it's like, it's in everything. It's unavoidable. So we've just embraced it. Hip hop has embraced it. You know, lots of genres have embraced it. So like I said, it's probably either tied for or it's my second favorite. But Okay. So that was a question I wanted to ask you when we were talking about Too Drunk is like, what was the song that was kind of tied for? Is it this one? Yeah, no, definitely. This is definitely one of the highlights for me on the album because it's just such a it's just such a vibe it's just such a fun chill you can eat like it's one of those songs that you could either get totally lit to or you can just vibe to and i love yeah. that i love songs yeah. that you know yeah i have a i have a playlist that it's it's specifically for when i'm driving at night in the rain and it went on there because like that is just such a mood and it's such a vibe and honestly like it's uh i think it's one of the the best produced and best mixed songs on the album i mean the whole thing's like pretty good some songs i feel like it's a little too heavy on the reverb but that's just my personal taste it's not like anything against the production i do think the the lyrics are kind of 
actually like hella cheesy on this song. <laughs> like the, there's a line that's okay. Yeah, but almost every song that is about whether it's about sex or love or anything, there's a little bit of cheese in there. I yeah. have this conversation with my guitarist all the time. Because when I make a li- when I make like a love song or I'm writing a song that's about a certain somebody, it's gonna end up being cheesy. That's just the end of the day. And I mean, people still sing it. And I mean, fuck it, who gives a shit? Like you know. Yeah, and that's very true. And once I get over that, because I mean, I there are other songs that I do like that are either about love or sex or whatever. And yeah, they're definitely like cheesy songs. But at the end of the day, a good song is a good song. Because like yeah, like I said, the production and the arrangement's really good. And um, I yeah, it's a good vibe. The whole album you could just kind of vibe to. But I think that song takes it up a notch so track eight is deeper love this is a really cool song uh i think it uh lyrically it's one of the better songs on the album uh i think it hits a little harder than some of the other songs on the album uh as far as just uh, more emotional movement uh because a lot of the the songs here they stay in more of a low territory like i mentioned earlier like almost like a lo-fi vibe in a lot of ways and the song kind of goes a little bit above and beyond that yeah uh, actually, when I first heard it, I was not a fan. It might actually, it might have been my least favorite song on the. Oh, album, really? Actually. That or the first track. But I, again, when I listened to it more and more, I was like, okay, it sounds better than I remember. I'm starting to like it more. I think the only main issue I have with this song, it just sounds so similar to "This Is Heaven," in my opinion. But now that I've listened to it a little bit more. I I definitely appreciate it more, but it's I wouldn't put it in my top three songs. But yeah. Well, okay. So here's a question for you: Since it sounds so similar to "This Is Heaven," if this song came out before "This Is Heaven," would you have liked it more? Probably. If we're being honest, probably. Yeah, because I do agree that they sound similar. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. But I I just think about like the arrangement and stuff like that and the lyrics, and I I do think it has the upper hand on "This Is Heaven." I don't know. That sax solo steals it for me. It's good. A song could be like kind of shit for most of it, but if there's a sax solo, <laughs> that's it, automatically it good. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's automatically good, but it definitely has it has value at that point. Like if you put an Imagine Dragon song, but you add some sax to it, I mean, it'll automatically it's still bad, but it's automatically better. So <laughs> So track nine is If I Fall. Uh, and this is another one that I like, mostly just for the lyrics being a little more deep. And that's just something that's kind of across the board on this album. Is um, uh, My main beef with uh, pop music and why I'm really picky about it is just because a lot of the lyrics are really shallow. But there are some songs on this album that uh, you know have more depth. And I like this one because it's about, you know, it's like if, if I fall in love with you, you're the kind of person that it's the last time I'm going to have to fall in love. That's the person I want to spend my life with. And I mean, look at look at the guy. I mean, he's happily married and like if you had asked me five years ago if nick jonas was ever going to settle down i don't know if i would have said yes I, I really really like this song i love the sample of like that's played throughout the song the the beat like the sample the beat and so that that alone once i heard that i was like oh okay i like this a lot and then it got better and better and better yeah this was definitely one of the standout tracks for me and i also i agree i do really like the lyrics and i also like the bridge for the song a lot too <laughs> i can't really yeah there's nothing really not much else to add song. yeah uh so track 10 it's I, yeah death I mean, i'm also kind of biased there's also like i can't like i'm not really gonna dish there's definitely i've made it clear that there's a couple of songs i'm not a huge fan of but i'm not gonna say that they're shit or anything i'm pretty biased so yeah i mean i feel like at this point we're so invested into his art that like if he made an imagine dragon sounding song you would probably still be like yeah this is pretty good yeah i mean i hope his voice doesn't turn out to sound like the imagine dragon <laughs> yeah That'd be a nightmare. Nick's definitely a better singer. So track 10 is Death Do Us Part. And I got to tell you, man, this song, I was I was vibing. I was like, ooh, feeling some soul. And, and then it just ends out of nowhere. Like, I hate the end of this song. Like, it was like ramping up. <laughs> it was ramping up to be like my favorite or one of my favorite songs yeah. on the album. And then it just ends yeah. like in the middle of the second chorus. And I'm like, why the hell did you do that to me? It was confusing, yeah. It was- but I mean, gosh, the, the vocal uh, harmonies and stuff in the uh, chorus especially, really the whole song, but the chorus especially, man, that is just, it's such a cool, such a cool tune. It de- it's definitely has some influence, some R&B influence, because for like, when he's, when it gets to um, like, about 20 seconds in the song it almost sounds like a weekend song like just the way he's singing and the way he's kind of placing the lyrics and i was like whoa this is different like i don't it's completely different from any song on the album yeah and it's, yeah, it's kind of dark it's really cool it's kind of dark and moody yeah a little bit i think for that song threw me off quite a bit i was like wait what the first time i heard it i was listening to it uh at, at work and i thought like maybe i accidentally hit skip or something so i went back and i listened to it again and no that's really how it ends <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i just i i like when people try to be different so you know just kind of ended off on a high note i guess which you know so i was like okay songs ends but it was good yeah i mean i like to think artistically that maybe when they were in the studio making that song they just couldn't think of a good way to end the song so they're just like let's just you know not have an end <laughs> 
Exactly. So I expect that. I mean, anybody trying to be different, trying to do something out of the box, totally, I'm all for it. Track 11 is nervous. And actually, this song probably is going to hit my uh, top three. I really like it. The uh, the road sound uh, in really? the post chorus, the nervous. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, man, it sounds so nice. Oh, yeah, that is. Um, cool. it, it sounds like the Wii theme. It sounds like the Wii Shop theme. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. Like, wow, this sounds familiar. Yeah, but also, uh, you know, kind of going back to like the cheesiness of it. But I think this song is a little bit more of a, um, it's like giddy. You know, when you like someone so much and you get like a fun giddy, like you kind of see, you know, you seem stupid, you know, like that's kind of yeah. what this, and that's the point. Like, that's what the lyrics are about. But like also just musically, it sounds giddy, you know, and like I said, with that road sound, that's like in the end of the course. In the description of this video, you can find a link to my top 10 of the week on, on Spotify. And uh, I've been listening to the song a lot. Well, it's, it's definitely not one of my favorites, but it, it, again, when I first heard it, it's kind of back to what you were saying about sexual, how it is kind of cheesy. That's how I felt about this song. Mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, this is it is, cheesy. yeah. And I wasn't a huge fan of the chorus for the song, but again, that was my first, first listening, which is completely different from how I feel about it now. So I, I definitely appreciate it a lot more. And I actually do, I mean, the, the lyrics are pr pretty relatable. And I mean, again, it is, I do kind of like the little Wii Shop theme uh, kind of at the beginning. So it's probably not going to make my top three or anything, mm -hmm. but it is. A, I, I like it. I like the lyrics and it's a lot better than how I originally felt about it. It's definitely a good closing song. I'm glad that it's last. It, it definitely, I think that's was a smart move. And then there's the, the, the two deluxe edition songs, uh, Selfish, which features uh, the Jonas Brothers. Uh, and then we have uh, Dangerous. I won't have a lot to say about Dangerous because I think I've only listened to it once. And from that listening, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Yeah, I was going to say Selfish is really good. Uh, I, I do genuinely enjoy that song. Uh, Dangerous is fine. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, in comparison to like literally the rest of the album, it's just like, eh, yeah, it's a decent, decently written pop song. So I would definitely say between the two of them, Selfish is better. Without a doubt, I am glad that they are the deluxe edition songs uh, because I actually don't think they really fit the vibe of the rest of the album. Like they're good songs that are yeah, made that's, well. That, that's literally what I was about to say. That's, yeah. yeah, I'm glad that it's on the deluxe because Selfish does not fit with the album at all, which is fine but because it's a deluxe edition. But as a song, like, you know, let's say they released it. It's great. I love it. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it definitely does not fit the, it does not fit the album at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I mean, I, I have the, uh, the version from target that has the two extra chill versions. Uh, but honestly, if there is a deluxe edition with selfish and dangerous, I'm not going to get it because my favorite way to listen to music is from beginning of the album to yeah. the end of the album. And I just, I like those songs but they, they do not do justice to the vibe that the entire rest of the album has dedicated itself to selling to you. No, I'm still going to buy it. I mean, yeah, I agree. It doesn't fit, but I'm still going to buy it. I didn't notice this until I was just looking here on Spotify, but the, the chill versions that are on the deluxe edition on uh, Spotify are different than the chill versions that are on the, the target version. Uh, so I don't know if you've taken the time to listen to all five of them. I won't really spend any time talking about them other than that they're just kind of cool alternate versions. But do you think any of them are better than the originals no not really i mean part of the reason is just because i'm not a, well i like acoustic songs but especially now that i actually play and it, they're good for practicing and they're good to getting better to know the song but like for just pure listening sake not really i'm not a huge acoustic fan but i mean they're cool it's a nice addition i don't know i actually kind of like um the chill version of don't give up on us and heights better than the originals but i do also think that they're not really acoustic versions they're just kind of more kind of advertised as as chill versions like the there's like next to no percussion and there's uh more guitar driving elements and stuff like that but they're not really acoustic versions i think they're a little too produced sounding to be uh i just acoustic, use the term but... acoustic whenever i'm talking about stuff like that mm -hmm. just because chill version just sounds a little sounds kind of weird also it just sounds like it could mean anything so it could be a jazz theme for all we know yeah like right. a jazz version of those songs so yeah, it's uh, This Is Heaven as uh, elevator music. That could be lit, possibly. Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's uh, real quick, uh, what would you say your top three are? I think I'm going to go ahead and say my third favorite is the title track, Spaceman. Uh, I, I really like it for a lot of the reasons that it's just relatable uh, and it's, it's transparent and it's, on and it's honest. Uh, but also it's just, it's freaking cool, man. And it's vibey and it's moody. The, the problem with me is, is that like, there's definitely more than just three songs that I like. So, and oh, well, I, I mean, I, I basically like the whole thing, but if I had to pick well, yeah, but favorites, the best, like the songs I'm going to listen to the most, I can tell you, but yeah, like I want to say it's Spaceman, but I want to do an honorable mention to If I Fall because 
I, I do really enjoy that song and I've gone back and listened to that song quite a bit. So mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I'd probably put Space Man at three just because it it just fits. It's just so damn catchy. Like that's that's a big thing. So I think my second favorite song is uh, "Nervous." Uh, like I said, I just I really like the the giddiness of it, and uh, I think it's a fun way to end a relatively serious album. And I really like the the road sound on it and all that. But yeah, I, would, I think I would say "Nervous" is my second favorite. Yeah, the second favorite. It's probably going to be "Sexual" because I mean we we pretty much all know what our number ones are. But the only reason that I would put this above the number one is because the, the I think the only not necessarily bad thing the only kind of gripe I have with the actual song itself is in the chorus you can kind it's kind of hard to hear the lyrics uh because it's just so produced and it's just kind of so subtle but at the same time I also really like it for that reason but I also kind of like to know what I'm you know what the person is singing so right that's like the only gripe I have with that song but other than that it's a, f- it's a great song so yeah so are we in agreement then that Too Drunk is our favorite song? Yeah. I mean, I think it was pretty obvious because like, we pretty much praised the shit out of that song. Like the minute we Yeah, that's because it, it's so. fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, it's just so relatable and the chorus is just so catchy. And I feel like I feel like that's the song that I'm going to show almost everybody whenever I play it, whenever I start this album. Because it's just a, it's a song that you would expect to hear at like a bar, at a club, or a house party. And I feel like that's going to be the song that's probably going to be probably going to hit the billboard. That's my prediction. That, that or Spaceman is going to be in the billboard or i believe that because i i believe that uh just because like i i uh, even saw that like space means his number one song on spotify right now uh like not as far as like total number of plays but as far as just what's popular right now um so i could i could see spaceman hitting well on billboard but yeah from what i've also seen on social media so far is that too drunk is uh is going to be a fan favorite yeah so again make sure you're uh subscribed so that you see uh sean and i's cover of this when it comes out sometime next week hopefully hopefully morgan doesn't screw it up so it yeah yeah, I'll just, pull out, I'll just pull out the uh, I'll just pull out the eight string guitar and gent on it the whole time and completely ruin it. I'm too drunk. Yeah, <laughs> voice and everything. That would be awesome. Just a metal version of a song about just getting drunk by yourself. That just sounds so awful. That sounds, sounds awesome. So fucking awful. I like to end my album reviews with giving it a letter grade. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it an A. I'll just give it a solid A. I, I'm almost wanting to say A minus, uh, just because like I I do think I still like his previous album better. If I'm being honest, I'm not gonna give it a letter grade because. I don't know. I'm not really big on letters, probably because I'm still in college right now. But uh, That's fair. yeah, uh, I'm going to say ranking the three albums that have been released, I'd say it's my second favorite. I still think Last Year's Complicated is a little bit better. And I, again, I'm biased, but I will say I think it's better than his first album solely consistency wise, because I feel like this album is a lot more focused and a lot more consistent. And his first album is, you know, kind of he was still trying to figure out his sound. It's a little discombobulated. Like it's got a lot of good songs, but it's a little messy. Yeah, exactly. It has some great songs, but, you know, it's just it doesn't really flow together. And I think, again, part of the reason is he was still trying to figure out his sound as a solo artist, which is fine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, I know it's also only, you know, mid-March, so the year is still young, but I mean, it's uh, one of my favorite albums that's come out so far this year. And also just like last year, I don't think was great for albums. And so it's just good that 2021 is already off to a really good start for new music you know well okay there was one amazing album that came out last year and that's i think everybody knows which album i'm talking about but yes i do agree that overall it was not the best year for me no it wasn't that uh so yeah uh thanks for checking out our review sean thanks for hopping on uh sean is there anything you want to plug your social medias your band anything like that (laughs) not yet hopefully i'll get there soon hopefully we'll get some stuff set up soon guys and then i'll start you know, spreading out like the, the coronavirus spreading out <laughs> word. Unfortunately, I got nothing right now. All right, Hopefully, cool. Give me like a week or give me one week and you'll have an album written. Yeah, there you go. No, I'll have at least a channel, <laughs> so I'll at least have some. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I thanks for I, an album. I feel like I feel like I could if I was told I had to, but would it be good? No. <laughs> it would not be good. Yeah, probably not. All right. Well, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe, like, uh, share with uh, anyone you know who likes Nick Jonas or someone who you think should be checking out this new Nick Jonas album because, uh, yeah, obviously we love it. And, uh, you yeah. know, peace out.